Hello and welcome to Undetectable Automation Episode 3, Revenge of the Captures. And this is going to be using Selenium Base UC mode, which is a special tool within a test automation framework that lets you bypass captures, and in particular, Cloudflare captures. So this, of course, is the follow-up to my previous video, Undetectable Automation 2, as you can see here. And that was quite popular. I, uh, it only came out three months ago, over 4,000 views, over 200 likes. And that was the follow-up to an even more popular video, Undetectable Automation, where we showed you all the basics of bypassing captures. And that, of course, had uh, over 800 likes and over 24,000 views in the last nine months. So we're going to expand on that today with some more advanced capture bypassing techniques. So here's a live demo of bypassing a CAPTCHA. As you can see here, we're going to gitlab.com and the CAPTCHA was bypassed with the Selenium Base automation using UC mode. Selenium Base wasn't detected. And the code for that is right here from Selenium Base import SB and then uh, with SB use equals true as SB, which is using a Python context manager format. You'll set the URL like this, uh, gitlab.com, user sign in, and then you'll call a method uc open with reconnect URL. And then there's a little bit more code after that because we have all of the uh, Selenium base methods available to you. So you could call a method such as assert text where you'll uh, write the text you want to assert followed by the CSS selector or selector of where you expect that text to be. And then you can also uh, modify the default timeout value as shown. And there are other methods such as assert element, which will look for that CSS selector in the default timeout. And then other methods like highlight and post a message like you see here, sending base wasn't detected. So even if using UC mode, you may still need to click the CAPTCHA checkbox in order to bypass it. And that's not a problem because there are special UC mode methods for handling that exact situation. So here are some of those methods. There's UC GUI handle captcha, which basically uses a tool called PyAuto GUI. And that tool will press the tab key a certain number of times until it hits the captcha and then hit spacebar to click the captcha. So that's the UC GUI handle captcha method. There's also the UC GUI click captcha method and PyAuto GUI is used again here and it's going to click the captcha with the mouse. Now note that you'll need to use this one if you're using Linux because uh, the other method won't work on Linux for some reason. I think maybe because they're more strict and you have to really click the captcha with a mouse. So when is clicking the captcha checkbox required? Well, if they've seen your IP address too many times, uh, then they'll make you click it. Also, if they don't accept your user agent string, they'll make you click the CAPTCHA. And don't worry, UC mode gives you a good one by default, although sometimes, depending on if you're using Linux, for example, uh, even a good user agent won't help you because they'll think you're using a server if you're on Linux, and then they'll force you to click the CAPTCHA. And they'll also make, probably make you click the checkbox of the CAPTCHA if you're using a VPN, if they detect it. So for testing purposes, I'll be using a bad user agent for some of my live demos. And this is gonna force me to click the CAPTCHA to bypass it so that we can simulate a more real world example where you might be running a script on Linux where you have to click the CAPTCHA, whereas on Mac and Windows, you might not necessarily have to click it if uh, they like the data they see in your web browser. So on the topic of live demos, I'll run some of them right now. Get ready for a live demo of bypassing Cloudflare with tab and spacebar. So as you can see here, we're going back to gitlab.com and uh, it's gonna tab through and then hit the spacebar automatically with PyAuto GUI. And then you can see that Selenium base wasn't detected. So here's the code for the previous live demo. It should look exactly the same as before, but we've added the UC GUI handle captcha method right, uh, right after calling the UC open with reconnect method. And of course, there's the other Selenium based methods that you may want to add to your script because once you've bypassed the CAPTCHA, you probably want to do some web scraping or something else. 
So let's continue the live demos with another one where we're gonna bypass Cloudflare with a mouse click. So here, we're going to gitlab.com again. It's gonna make you click the captcha. Pato GUI detects the location of the checkbox and then automatically goes to click it. And you can see that Selenium base wasn't detected. So here's the code for the previous live demo. It's going to look very similar as before, except this time after calling UC open with reconnect, we're going to call UC GUI click CAPTCHA and that's gonna make Pyoto GUI click the CAPTCHA checkbox. And then your additional methods that you wanna add after that. All right, so here's a quick recap of what you just learned. You can activate UC mode with uh, UC equals true, and here it's SBUC equals true because we're using that syntax format. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, to navigate with Stealth, just call UC open with reconnect and the URL, and uh, you can also specify an optional reconnect time if the default time isn't long enough. And you just wanna make sure that your reconnect time is longer than the time it takes for your page to load. So you can use UC GUI handle CAPTCHA or UC GUI click CAPTCHA to bypass CAPTCHAs as needed. It's that easy. So things can get a bit more complicated than that. So previous tutorials on YouTube that you saw mentioned the method UCClickSelector. Now, although this method can no longer click a CAPTCHA directly, it should be used when clicking on something else that causes a CAPTCHA to appear after that. And here's a live demo of that. So we're going to go to ahrefs.com and after typing in some text and clicking a button, it's gonna make the CAPTCHA appear and then I'll click it. And as a bonus, we're gonna click it just in case it didn't go through uh, with the automation. And now you're able to scrape the web page because you are able to bypass the CAPTCHA that appeared. So the code for the previous demo that you just saw can be found on the Selenium Base GitHub page. Just go to the examples folder and you'll find over 200 examples of various things uh, that you will be seeing here today. So continuing with live demos, get ready for another live demo of using the UC Click selector method to bypass a Cloudflare CAPTCHA on steamdb.info. So we're going into Steam and then we're going to use UC Click that then takes you to a Cloudflare CAPTCHA that gets bypassed right away. And now, now that you're on the page, you can uh, log in, do whatever you want. You can see that Selenium base wasn't detected. We ran some fancy JavaScript to have that message pop up. So the code for the previous live demo is right here. Uh, we did UC equals true. And then we also uh, disabled the content security policy on that website so that we can inject JavaScript in there because some websites don't let you inject JavaScript depending on uh, their content security policy settings. So we go uh, UC open with reconnect for that URL and then we called the UC click and then after that method was called it took you to a CAPTCHA but just to make sure that the CAPTCHA was bypassed we're adding in a UC GUI click CAPTCHA just to be safe, to be sure that we bypass the CAPTCHA when going through. And then you have all the other methods that you need, such as assert text, maybe another UC click, highlight, set messenger theme, and then post the message that Selenium base wasn't detected. So here's some important information. UC mode now requires PyAuto GUI for all features to work. Now PyAuto GUI may require enabling admin level permissions for controlling the mouse and the keyboard. Pyoto GUI doesn't support headless mode, and that's okay because UC mode now includes a special virtual display on Linux so that you no longer need to use headless mode in GUI-less environments. So that's very important to know. Uh, don't try to use headless mode anymore. Uh, let UC mode uh, give you the special virtual display and that will immediately let you run a GUI in a headless environment. So some general information, uh, don't assume that all CAPTCHA services are secure, even if they say they are. I think you find it's rather more than just in order, sir. You're now entering the most secure location in the whole of England.
looking at you, Cloudflare. So on the other hand, some CAPTCHA services are quite good. Let's take a look here. The Google reCAPTCHA test, we're gonna try to click it. Oh, it failed because it's making you select all images with bridges. So uh, well done, Google reCAPTCHA. Uh, you've passed uh, our little test. I'm from MI7. This has been a test of your emergency response systems, and I have to say, you've all done extremely well. Right, well, I'll leave you to it, and uh, get well soon. However, the real reason UC Mode is popular, which you saw earlier, is because of the Cloudflare bypass capabilities. That's where the uh, high reputation comes from. Yes, good, you have reputation. I'll come Reynolds gets it done is the talk. Well, I'd love to hear that. If this is your first tutorial on UC Mode or Selenium Base, then here are some important things to know to understand things better. So what is Selenium Base? Selenium Base is a complete framework for web automation and testing with Python and Selenium. Now, although there are many different features, the most popular one today is UC Mode, which enables Selenium browsers to appear as human-controlled browsers to websites. So let's talk about structuring your scripts and tests. So there are different ways of structuring Selenium-based scripts, and internally this is called uh, the 23 syntax formats. So most examples use syntax format 1 uh, from the Selenium-based examples folder, and that uses base case direct class inheritance, which uses the PyTest test runner. However, the next one in popularity is syntax format 21, Selenium Base SB, the Python context manager, which is ideal and recommended for UC mode. And as you saw in the earlier examples today, that was the syntax format that we were using for the example shown. So here's the base case direct class inheritance. You can see that from the Selenium Base help doc syntax formats uh, file. Uh, so in this format, which is used by most of the tests in the Sunny Base Examples folder, base case is imported at the top of a Python file, as shown here, and followed by a Python class inheriting base case. So here I create a class, my test class, base case. Then any test method defined in that class automatically gains access to Selenium Base methods, including the setup and teardown methods that are automatically called for opening and closing web browsers at the start and end of tests. So you can see here, we created a test demo site, and because it starts with test underscore, uh, this makes uh, PyTest automatically detect it when it starts searching for tests. And you might have noticed the base case .main name file line, and that just basically enables Python to run PyTest on your file indirectly, which is basically used if you forget to call your script with PyTest. If you call it with Python, that line is going to automatically trigger PyTest for you. So here's Selenium Base SB, which is probably the format you're going to be using or you'll want to use if you're using Selenium Base UC mode. And here it's just a simple from Selenium Base import SB, and then you'll have with SB as SB. That is the Python context manager format. And remember, if you're using UC mode, make sure to add UC equals true in there. Otherwise, you won't be using the stealth mode. And here's the format you see here. So now let's talk about the Selenium Base GitHub page, which is just a massive area of knowledge and tools that are quite powerful. As you can see here, there's just a lot going on, and it's actually quite fancy, even if it doesn't look it. Gentlemen, this is the EM50 Urban Assault Vehicle. Note that there is tons of excellent documentation for tools such as the recorder, UC mode, etc., which has its own README file. This is amazing. You wouldn't believe what this thing could do. And you may find that some tools are quite powerful.
I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm going to fit it in now. So I'm Michael Mintz, and I created the Selenium based framework. And I also lead the automation team at iBoss. And as you can see here, I am sitting at a recruitment booth because we went to UMass Amherst, where I went to school for my undergraduate degree, and we're recruiting new employees. So uh, here's just a you know, fun little photo of me at work, or doing stuff for work. So also, I've reached over 2 million developers on Stack Overflow, as you can see here, 2 million people reached. And I've got quite the reputation there because I basically helped lots of developers solve their Python and automation problems. So let's talk about the great CAPTCHA duel. So throughout the past few years, Cloudflare has pushed a lot of changes to their turnstile CAPTCHA. And in order to keep UC mode working, I had to push a lot of updates to counter those changes. It has been an epic duel. So sometimes Cloudflare pushed multiple changes at the same time. And that's when I had to make multiple UC mode updates to counter those changes. Sometimes I received a little assistance from GitHub. So let's talk about the timeline of major Cloudflare updates. So on March 20th, 2024, Cloudflare pushed a major update where they could detect UC mode Selenium clicks. And the outcome of that is that UC mode's UC click selector method was updated to click on captures via JavaScript using window.setTimeout, which basically lets you call a JavaScript method in the future. So then, on May 10th, 2024, Cloudflare pushed a major update where CSS selectors of CAPTCHAs were updated. And the outcome of that is that I had to update all the UC mode examples to change span.mark to just span. And uh, no regular uh, sunny based changes were needed, only changes to the example tests, because all the tests were using span.mark, so I basically updated all the tests and then told people, yeah, just update your selectors. So then, on June 7th, 2024, Cloudflare pushed an update where CAPTCHAs could detect JavaScript clicks. This was a major setback. So the outcome of that is that I had to add new UC mode methods for clicking on CAPTCHAs with Pyoto GUI, and you saw those methods earlier in the examples I ran. So then, on July 8th, 2024, Cloudflare made an update where CAPTCHAs were hidden behind Shadow DOM. They really went in for the killing blow there. So the outcome of that is that I updated existing UC mode methods so that they could determine the CAPTCHA coordinates for Payado GUI. Let's see how you fire that mortar. What coordinates, sir? Coordinates. Yes, sir. They determine where the mortars are. Ah, uh, soldier. The army has spent a lot of money teaching you how to fire that thing. Now set it and fire it. And it was same day delivery, thanks to an advance warning on Discord a few days earlier, where an apparent Cloudflare employee mentioned that Shadow Dom was coming to their captures, which was great because that allowed me time to prepare things before they released their Shadow DOM CAPTCHA update. We got a mole on board. On July 25th, Cloudflare made updates to the CSS selectors that come before Shadow DOM. And the outcome of that is I updated existing UC mode methods. And you can use UC GUI handle CAPTCHA or UC GUI click CAPTCHA for any CAPTCHA now. And on Linux, only UC GUI Click CAPTCHA works. Just a reminder for that. I said that earlier, but it's important that you keep that in mind. 
So next, uh, only minor changes from Cloudflare have been shipped since then so far, but it's basically been you know, quite the skirmish back and forth here and there. They make a change, I make an update back and forth so that I can keep UC mode working with all the latest Cloudflare updates. So remember, give me space to work on UC mode updates as needed. Excuse me. Pardon me, it's important. Pass it, please. Thank you. Because you never know when they'll strike next. So let's talk about some theories on how Cloudflare detects JavaScript. So a month before Cloudflare added JS detection, a GitHub repo named Brotector was released. Now Brotector is capable of detecting both Selenium and JavaScript. Based on experiments, Brotector's detection mechanisms appear to get the same results as Cloudflare's detection mechanisms. It appears that Cloudflare learned from them. So here's the Brotector GitHub page, and it's uh, maybe a little popular now, but essentially uh, this repo here had the JavaScript code that could detect Selenium and other JavaScript actions. And of course, uh, the creator of this repo borrowed a lot of JavaScript from other uh, repos, such as Selenium Detector and JDetects. So basically it was a combined effort to build a Selenium detector and JavaScript detector that was open source. Well, not so much a JavaScript detector, but detecting JavaScript click actions on a website. Important difference because pretty much all websites are all JavaScript pretty much. So I was able to use Protector to make UC mode better. So in order to make UC mode better, I decided to build my own open source CAPTCHA using Protector and I called it the Protector CAPTCHA. Unlike Cloudflare's detection system, which only scans for bots on page loads and CAPTCHA clicks, the Protector CAPTCHA continuously scans for bots. This makes it a more powerful anti-bot system. So here you can see uh, the Protector CAPTCHA that I designed, and you can find that on seleniumbase.io slash apps slash protector and uh, you have to go click that I am not a robot. And if you're not a robot, it'll let you through. And if it detects that you're a robot, uh, it'll fail. And here's what it looks like when they detect you. Uh, this is basically more of a demo website so it can show you how it detected you. So it might detect navigator.webdriver. And here it shows the time in milliseconds after the page load completed. You'll also see that it detected window.cdc which basically shows the Chrome DevTools console variables that appeared there uh, when you loaded the page. And UC mode would hide that so that those variables wouldn't appear. And then you also have the runtime stack access, which detects the web driver there. So you can see that it's quite an advanced uh, anti-bot system. So here's a live demo of the Protector CAPTCHA on a website. So uh, access denied, Gandalf blocked you because you went to seleniumbase.io slash hobbit login. And of course, if you're using UC mode correctly, you can bypass the protector CAPTCHA. Here's a demo of that. So the hobbit antibot test page, verifying that. And then if you've gotten through, you'll get to a screen here, welcome to Middle Earth, where Selenium Base wasn't detected. And it'll play a nice fun animation where you zoom in on Middle Earth there. So what happens when Cloudflare adds real-time bot detection like Protector already has? So currently, UC mode uses Selenium to locate the CAPTCHA checkbox before the PyAuto GUI click. And this is fine for now because Cloudflare only scans during page loads and CAPTCHA clicks, but not in the time between that. So there's already a plan in place for the day Cloudflare adds real-time bot scanning. Plan. Great. Had a plan too. Here's the plan to handle that. Uh, basically, uh, you already have the existing method UC GUI click CAPTCHA, and there's a third argument called blind. 
And if you basically set that blind arg to true, it'll force a retry if the first click failed by clicking at the last known coordinates of the CAPTCHA checkbox without confirming first with Selenium that a CAPTCHA is still on the page. The page will need to reload first. So let's take a field trip to the UC mode help docs. And as you can see here, we're just gonna jump on this fancy button here, which will open a tab. And now we have uh, the UC mode docs, as you can see here. And at the very top, you'll see a link uh, to the first UC mode video, followed by a link to the second UC mode video tutorial. And you can see that uh, there's gonna be lots of examples and descriptions about how it all works. So you can see here a simple example with the driver format, which is not one of the formats we covered earlier because it doesn't have all the features as the SP format, but it's basically from Selenium base import driver, and then you can do driver equals driver, UC equals true, and then make sure to use the existing methods like UC open re reconnect, and then quit the driver at the end. So this will basically allow you to bypass GitLab. However, if uh, for the more advanced functionality, for instance, if you're using Linux, then you're definitely going to need the SP format because that contains the special virtual display that allows you to run PyAuto GUI in a GUI-less environment. And you can probably see all these examples as we saw earlier. Uh, be sure to try these out on your own if you want to. This one you saw earlier too, the uh, hrefs were basically, we went through and we did a UC click in order to click the uh, CAPTCHA checkbox, or actually to basically bypass the CAPTCHA checkbox without clicking on it. However, if it didn't pass the click, you've got the UC GUI click CAPTCHA method after that, just to make sure you got through that CAPTCHA. So here's some other examples. And you can see here, I've been uh, testing it on Linux with a script like this, and it's working quite well. As you can see, uh, I'll zoom in. It is running successfully in GitHub Actions on Ubuntu. And the first just a moment uh, line was happening here, the print when you first get to the page, and then we called the UC GUI click CAPTCHA, and then we called that print line again, and then we saw that it says virtual manager this time, meaning that it bypassed the CAPTCHA within GitHub Actions on a Linux machine. So uh, note that there's just gonna be a ton of examples and other useful things that you may wanna read on your own time because there is a lot to cover. And there's also other driver-specific methods that you may be interested in, such as you know, driver.disconnect, driver.connect, uh, other methods that weren't, that weren't covered earlier, such as UC GUI press key or UC GUI press keys, so that you can basically use PyAuto GUI to press keys on a keyboard in UC mode. And you even have a method UC GUI click XY, which allows you to click on any point in the screen with PyAuto GUI, which maybe you'll want to use if, say, uh, Cloudflare makes a change and I haven't yet updated UC GUI click CAPTCHA to handle the new coordinates of where the CAPTCHA checkbox is going to be. So this is like a method you could use as an alternative. And as again, you can see UC GUI click CAPTCHA, which basically auto detects the CAPTCHA and then calls UC GUI click CF for clicking Cloudflare and, or UC GUI click RC for reCAPTCHA. And although the reCAPTCHA bypassing isn't working at the moment, so uh, essentially UC GUI click CAPTCHA just calls UC GUI click CF, which I might have mentioned uh, in earlier uh, videos. So then you also have the UC GUI handle CAPTCHA, which uses the tab key and the space bar to click the CAPTCHA. So note that the reconnect time is used to specify how long the driver should be disconnected from Chrome to prevent detection before reconnecting again. And it's important that you set the reconnect time to longer than it takes for that initial page load to happen because Cloudflare checks for Selenium on the initial page load. And if your reconnect time is less than the time it takes for the page to load, then they'll probably detect that you're using Selenium and then block you. So lots of other cool stuff here, uh, such as basically uh, setting the reconnect time to breakpoint so that you can manually put in actions on the page without being detected, et cetera. 
Uh, and also note that even though the arg is uh, frame equals iframe, since uh, Cloudflare changed their captures around to hide everything behind Shadow DOM, uh, instead of breaking backwards compatibility and changing the name frame to selector, it's actually that you should put the selector of something above the iframe in that particular scenario, not putting iframe there because the iframe is no longer visible in its magic shadow DOM world where things are hidden. So to find out if UC mode will work on a specific site, just uh, throw in your reconnect time equals breakpoint, uh, play around, and if it works, then you'll know that you can use the existing methods to bypass caches. And of course, there's a multi-threaded system so that you can use, say, PyTest multi-threading in order to run multiple scripts at the same time. Or if you're using concurrent.futures, just make sure you add the sys.argv.append-n, which basically tells Selenium Base to do thread locking as needed so that uh, it can basically make sure that it's not trying to call like Pyoto GUI from different scripts at the same time, which would overlap and cause problems. So the things that make UC mode work is that, you know, it modifies Chrome driver to rename Chrome DevTools console variables. It launches Chrome browsers before attaching Chrome driver to them. And it disconnects Chrome driver from Chrome during stealthy actions. And with all those things done, you've got UC mode and you're bypassing captures as long as you're using all the special methods that are described there. So yeah, definitely be sure to uh, read the full readme so that you're fully aware of how everything works. So yeah, that is the UC mode health docs and hopefully that answers a lot of questions there. So be sure to study, study, study. There's a lot of important information in the UC mode docs so study well to avoid falling into traps. And sometimes you might still be able to get out of a trap you fell into. Ah, uh, the Heckler and Koch G36. Quite deadly in the right hands. Once you bypass a captcha, be ready for anything. So there's more to come. As usual, expect more UC mode updates. And uh, note that, you know, Cloudflare will make changes and then UC mode sometimes has to make changes immediately after that to keep things running smoothly. And also note that new projects are classified until released. Well, I never heard of you. And you're not on my roster. <laughs> That's just the way we like to keep it, Captain. It's... Double, double, top secret. Intelligence? Some. Anything I could tell you would be a lie, Captain, so... So questions? Check out the GitHub page. GitHub.com slash Selenium Base slash Selenium Base slash discussions. And then you can open a discussion there. Or maybe first check to see that there isn't already an existing discussion that answered your question. And if you found a bug, github.com slash slending base slending base issues so you can open a bug there so final remarks slending base gives you the tools you need to succeed yeah, a real life wow, it's fantastic. and tools to build lots of bots So we've reached the end of this presentation. I hope you've learned a lot about Selenium Base and UC mode, and do be sure to check out the Selenium Base GitHub page so that you can learn all about everything you want to know, such as UC mode specifics, uh, Selenium Base specifics, etc. There's so much there, and just yeah, uh, check it out and have a great time automating. I'll see you next time. <laughs>